Good evening, everybody, and welcome to the GSV Swimming Championships. I'm Deb Kinder. I'm a Swimming Victoria official and heavily involved in school swimming, which I really enjoy. It's great to see the swimmers back in the pool. Definitely is. I'm Tim Roberts here, and I'll be joining Deb tonight. Should be a good night of racing. Should be great. Not too cold out there, I hope. It's a pretty warm night in Melbourne, actually. I think it's still 20 outside. Oh, is so, it? Yeah. I've been stuck inside all day, so okay. no, it's not been a really nice sure night. what the weather's like. Even for late March, it's pretty good. Yes. So we've got the uh, year, year 7, year 8, 100 metre freestyle up first. Yes. Should be a good one. Should be. You'd be assuming some of these girls will be off to nationals, well, hopefully in two weeks' time. So yes. That's so. the last hit out, I guess, before they head up. I'd say so, yeah. So... Age starts in a week, I think, and then opens would be a week after that. Yep. Fingers crossed they get COVID under control. And, and they can, can actually, yeah, get up there and actually race. Absolutely. All righty. I can Gee. hear some cheering going on, so yeah. the swimmers must be making their the way out onto pool deck. almost ready to go. And uh, no crowd allowed tonight, I think. It's just no. the competitors. So, a bit different to normal. Yes, unfortunately not. Yep. But lucky we're here to exactly help right. them watch. So, there's our start list for the first event. I think the girls are actually just walking around the other side of the yes, pool right now as they come around. around. Can hear some cheering. I think that's Genizano cheering at the moment. I you think? think. Yeah. Okay. From the side behind us over here. With all the different chants going on as yeah, they walk exactly right. down, get them pumped up. I've seen quite a few of these names in the last few months, different meets. Yeah. Well, they just had state age not, yeah, not long ago. Not and some so of these go girls have raced at state opens as well. Yeah, absolutely. Probably a few weeks ago. So... And some of them, I think, even would have raced on the weekend at the All Juniors. Yep. Yeah, the younger ones, down yep. to 14s and under. Yeah, it even went up to 16 this oh, year. Oh, did it? Oh, is that so okay, they've, they've changed it. Yep, they've added in a couple of age groups. Yep. It was the All Junior Finals, wasn't it? Yeah, so they had yep. the semi-finals on Saturday, and then the top 10 from those events went on to the finals on, on Sunday. On Sunday, yep. Yep, so it was a busy weekend here. It's always the splash and dash in the All Juniors as well, isn't it? Yes, 50 yep. metres. <laughs> It's done and like, dusted. It's almost like state sprints. <laughs> yeah. All right, here we go. 100 meter freestyle. Yes. You probably noticed as well on the program looking here that a lot of these girls who have qualified in this freestyle have also qualified in multiple other events. So it shows that they're not just strong in one event, that they can do. Yeah, multiple events, multiple distances. Yes, and I see we have a swimmer in lane seven from Star of the Sea, only student from that school to qualify in an individual event. Yep, Charlotte Mead. Yes, which is great to see. And they're off. Off from racing. Looks like it's a good start from Portia Gowry, actually. From MLC there. She yep. looks to be leading at the moment. Looks like Natasha Coleman uh, also swimming well from Strathcona in lane four. But I think at this point, it looks like Portia Gowry is probably going to take it at the first 50. Yeah, it looks like she's turned first in lane yep. six. And she has turned to the 30.09, which is pretty quick. But it's always really important to hang in that second 50. Absolutely, and those underwaters are really important. Yeah. Well, they're all closing in now. Coming down to that last 15 now. Looks like Natasha Coleman might have just taken the lead from Strathcona. It's going to be a tight finish, though. Yep. So, lane five. Is that lane five? No, no, Natasha Coleman from lane four from Strathcona takes it out in a 102.61. Yep. Followed by Lilka Seidel. And Porsche came third. Yep. So we're moving on to the year nines. Is it year nine and ten? Year nine, year ten girls. Yep, 100 freestyle again. Yep. Some names that we've seen before, Lana Torrance. Yes. 
Holly Neville. She's a very handy swimmer. Yep, Giselle Davey also. Charlotte Fay, who I'm pretty sure swims out of Vic Centre. Emily Voolidge from Eltham yep. College. Some household names that we hear often. Absolutely. So it looks like some of these girls have swam most years in this event. The last couple of years. Yeah, look at Alana Torrance is from every possible year. Yeah. Same with uh, Clara Sedell. Mm -hmm. And as you said, a lot of them swimming all the different strokes. Fly, free, breast. Bit of backstroke in there. Yep. It looks like they're coming down towards that first 50, I think. It looks like Alana Torrance might have them here. Although in lane three going really well, there is Giselle Davey. Oh, there's a few of them have turned together yeah, Giselle there. Giselle so Davies Giselle. turned in a 28-1. Yep. I think you'll see Holly come home pretty hard here. Yep. Same with Alana Torrance. You'd expect to be coming home pretty strong too. Yep. Giselle Davies looks like she's still in front though, so she's hanging on after a strong first 50. Yep. Here comes Holly now. She's put the head down. It's going to be a really tight finish actually. Yep. I think Alana Torrance is going to get them. Yeah. Yep. 58-1. That's pretty quick. That's a pretty good time, yeah. Giselle Davies second in a 58-5-3, followed by Holly Neville in a 58-7. So all three girls have gone under 59. It's, yeah. It's a great result. Absolutely. That's a quick final. Certainly is. So some of these girls, if they're going to open nationals, they'll find it a little bit different this year. Heats at night, finals yeah, in the morning. to get ready for Tokyo. Yep. I think it's a good idea to get these guys adjusted to what's going to be happening when they get there. Line yep. Torrance, you'd expect we got the replay. Home pretty strong I think as well, because the American TV rights yep. are part of the reason behind the changing of the Tokyo Sessions. Sessions. Is that what it is? Yeah. She's so. still in front, though, so she's hanging on. All right. All right, the 11-12 girls. Year 11 and 12, that is. <laughs> Olivia Lafoe is one to look out for here. Yeah. Great swimmer from Nutterwadding. Her ex-teammate Maggie in lane five next to her. Yep. So Liv's gone to Nutterwadding now, and Maggie's still at MLC. Yeah, Olivia's a bit of a jack-of-all-trades, can do every event. It's been great and everything for a long time. Looks like we're missing lane three. Is that lane three we're missing? Yep. Maddie Hooker. So Maddie Hooker's not here tonight. No show. On, not in this <clears> event. So, yeah, four and five have yep. turned pretty Point, much. 0 0.2 bit difference between them, between yep. Maggie and Olivia. Both yes. at a 28-0. It's going to be a really quick time here by these two, actually. Yeah, it looks like Maggie's like hanging in there with you, but... Yeah, it looks Olivia like... Olivia Fyder might just pull away from it. Oh, then again. It's going to be a tight oh, finish. it will be tight. Yep, just at the touch. 57-7 by Olivia Lafoe there, followed by Maggie Skews in a 58-1-1. And Amelia Chilaro in third with a 101. Yep. Under 58, it's pretty quick for uh, non-tapered, you'd expect as well, to be coming down in a few weeks' time. Yeah, absolutely. Now we move on to the other end of the pool for the 50s. Yeah. We're into breaststroke. Yeah, like. Might just pull away oh, from it. Oh, then so as again. You said, the old splash and dash. Yep. Yep. It's a nice oh, finish. It will be tight. <laughs> so Lily Kosh in lane four. I'm yep. pretty sure she won a sports award last year. Yep. Sporting Blue Award. Sporting and Blue Award. Yep. From MLC. Yes. In the lane next to her as well, Millie Dodd. Another MLC swimmer. Okay. And then there's the swimmer in lane seven who's also a lone student to qualify from her school, St. St. Margaret's. Margaret. Bronwyn Zeng. Yep. This looks a uh, very fast time here by uh, Lily Kosh. Yeah, she's a well-known for her breaststroke. 5 that's very quick. Yeah. She's won that comfortably in the end as well over Amelia Otto. Yep, nearly three 38, seconds. Yeah, 38-7. Yep. Okay, and our year eight girls now. Thing here. 
That's it. So I definitely remember some of these names from the weekend. So Darby Wilkes, I'm pretty sure, swam at the All Juniors. Oh, Natasha Coleman just won the 100 metre freestyle. And yep, she's up, so she's backing up now. Backing up again. That's a short turnaround. <laughs> that certainly the, is. Uh, Much time for a swim down. Yeah. I'm not sure if these girls have got a warm down pool tonight anyway, do they? I think they're just... Not sure if there's any lanes inside for them. Yeah. <clears throat> so it be interesting how these girls back up doing sort of four and five races in a night. You often find with the school swimming, it's it's a lot of racing, you know, one after the other. They don't get much recovery time. Yep, exactly. But they have all their teammates cheering them on, which I think gives them a bit of the added incentive. That spurs them on normally. Looks like Lilka Sedell's probably going to touch them out here. Yep. Yep, and she is. 35.89. It's quite quick. Natasha Coleman second in a 36.27, followed by Maddie Clifford in a 36.59. Okay. So this next one, Alana Torrance backing up again and Amelie Village from that last race that we just saw. Yeah. Straight back into it in the 50 breaststroke. Very versatile, some of these swimmers. I guess a lot of these girls are training, not just one or two events, as we were saying before, that they're probably practicing at training three or four different events that they're targeting, come a nationals or coming a state yeah. championship sort of. And it's really carnival. important, I think, at this age, especially to, to race develop, all the strokes. Yeah, develop your distances yeah. and your speeds, all different strokes. Plenty can, of time for specialising as exactly you get older. Right. Yep. So it looks like Alana Torrance is coming away with this. This will be back-to-back -back victories for her. Win. Yeah, yep. 34.72. Followed by Emily Price in a 36.13. And Amelie Vulich takes out third in a 36 Alana. Torrance is going to Coming take away her. with this. This will be back to back victories for her. Okay. Next up, the year 11 girls. Breaststroke. So some of these names are familiar to me. So we've got yep. Sophia Piea in lane three. She used to train with my daughter when my daughter was there at that go. club. So Small world. It is. And Lila McNamara, she's one of the Vic Centre girls. Tara swam in a relay with her at age. Oh, there you go. <clears throat> Be good to see some maybe some 33s, 32s as we coming down to these older girls, older yep. girls here. Yep. You can see as well now the pattern's starting to emerge with some of these girls swimming every year in this event. Yep. They've been here and done it all before. Got a bit of a smoker out there in lane zero by the look of it. Is it Zara or... Uh, Shani Zhao. Sa Shani Zhao, sorry. Fintana. Yeah, she's going really well out there in lane zero. Though it looks like it's Sophia Paella or is it Lila it's McNamara? Like Lila. Lila Lila's McNamara's going to take it out. She does yeah. at 37-0. Good swim. Just tipped her out there. Yeah, Hannah Morsey in third. Yep. So some more names just keep coming back. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> same old, same old. Yeah, so we've got, um, well, Maddie didn't swim her 100 free. I'm not sure if she'll be up for a breaststroke in lane one. No, it no, looks Maddie like hooker? an empty block yeah. there in lane one. Yep, so, so she's, she's not, here tonight. not here. Do we have any emergencies tonight? Not that I know of. Not that I know of, yep. And so you've got Dommy Maloney in lane five, whose mum's out on pool deck officiating. There you go. And then Sarah Ecker in lane eight, whose mum I know well, works for Swim Victoria. Well, there so you go. Plenty of talent out there. I noticed here Madeline Marshall won this event in 2019. Obviously, last year was a write off, so it'd be interesting whether she can back it up and take it home again. Yep. She's in lane four. Lane four here. Sacre Coeur. It looks like she's just in front of uh, Domi Maloney here as well. Although it's well, coming think, down the finish here, Baloney might yeah, just have Yeah, I her. think it's going to be at the... Yep. Yep. She does. Yeah, Dummy's just touched her out. 35-4-4. So I'm sure Mum will be happy to see that. It's a great swim. You thought... It looks like uh, Marshall had that one, but Maloney just had the last 10 yeah, metres, just finished on a full stroke. Yeah, stroke rate was a bit quicker. 
So important that breaststroke, though, finishing on that full stroke. Absolutely. Otherwise, that glide into the wall could cost <laughs> <Yeah>. you. <laughs> right, oh, yeah. the... I've had the pleasure of knowing Olivia Nguyen for a new few years now. She's quite a character in this race. Yes. She's quite funny. Retired now, so yeah. to speak. She was a backstroker when she was swimming. Yep. So, but again, she was good at all the strokes. And then Abby Richards in lane two. She was a breaststroker. She was, a, um, I think, she was a national level breaststroker. Yep. Well, she's actually going really well out there in uh, in lane two. From from Wrighton. There's actually two swimmers from Wrighton in this race too. Yeah, and they're next door to each other. It does look like Joanna Stathoulos might have just got in front, though. Oh, yeah, it's yeah. close. Joanna Stathoulos does take it out in a 35.75. Only 0.03 between first and second there. Yep. <clears throat> now moving on to the butterfly. Ooh, we're racing along. So the girls use seven 50-metre butterflies up next. So Nell Peet from Melbourne, I think she's from Melbourne, that's Melbourne Girls Grammar, isn't it? I think so, yeah, yep. Melbourne Girls Grammar. Yes, I do some of their school carnivals. Yep. Be exciting for these girls as well. Year 7, first ever GSV finals night. Yeah. And hopefully many more to come. Yes. Some of these year 8s, so I'm guessing it would be their first time Actually, it would be two their first. Missing out last year. Yep. It's always fascinating in a 50 butterfly and also in a 50 freestyle how some of these guys don't will barely breathe. They might only breathe one or two times in a 50. It's pretty yep. amazing for the, the everyday person at home watching yeah. to understand how hard these girls can actually go. Yes. So it looks like lane four here. Oh, it is it like five? Oh, Sophie Jacker, 30.37. Of Anel Pete, who went 30.92. Yep. It's a very quick time, 30.3. Almost under the magical 30-second barrier. That's pretty quick for year seven. Yes. Now, moving on to year eight. 50 fly. Some of these names I'm not so familiar with. What about you, Tim? Do you know any of these girls? Uh, is Olivia Ma related to... Is it Stone. Stone Ma. Is that Possibly. any relation? Could be. Because if it is, I'm sure she's going to be going pretty quick. Yes. <laughs> well, they're all there. Looks like a good start from... I think it is Olivia Ma that has a good start from Strathcona. Also swimming well from Coral is Kareen Tan. Yeah, she, looks she looks going like quite strong, actually. I think she might be leading at this point, coming down that last 10 metres to go, now down to five. Although finishing really strong is Audrey Doan. It's going to be tight. Yep. Yeah, she is Audrey Doan. She's held on all 30.6. Yeah. She takes it out. Kareen second. Kareen Tan in a 30.94, followed by Miranda Goo in a 9 Girls getting their ribbons as they hop out. All right, yep. Do you nine girls 50 meter butterfly? Mm -hmm. So Sienna Reedy from Sienna College. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> And she's, there's a lot of these girls, once again, swim every single year Yeah. in this race. Quite a few of these swam the 100 free. Yep. Although it looks like we haven't got the winner from last year swimming it in this race. Okay. <clears throat> so this will be an interesting race to watch. Giselle Davey came second in 2019. Mm-hmm. Maddie Doyle was third in 2019. So I know Greta... NARP, I think you pronounce it. She swam at all juniors on the weekend because I remember announcing her name and hoping I pronounced it correctly. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Right. And they're off. Yep. 
So important as well in these 50s to nail those underwaters in the start. Yeah, not much room for error There's in a 50 metre race. Exactly right. Looks like Giselle Davies had a really strong start there in lane four from Shelford. In fact, yeah. she's looking really strong here as she comes down to those last that, ten. She's got that rhythm going. Yeah. Yeah, she's running away with it now. Yeah, that's a really strong swim. 28-4. 28-4. That's a, it's a pretty quick that's time. That's a very quick swim. Maddie Doyle second in a 29-6-6. But 28-4-4, that's a really quick time. It's a great swim. I'd love to know how close it is to, to a GSV record, that sort of swim. Yes. I'm not sure what the records are. Mm -hmm. All right. The Year 10 girls, 50 meter butterflies up next. <laughs> Some of these girls, are, I'm sure they just swam breaststroke and they're They've just... just swam before, two minutes ago. Straight back into the fly. Yep. So it's good to hear the cheering from the stands, even though there's not many up there. Yeah, I think the girls have made an effort to really get around their teammates yeah. tonight. It's also really important a 50 fly as well, isn't it, to not overrate and you've got to keep a rhythm but still go fast. Yep. There's always a fine line in that butterfly. Yes, you've got to be relaxed but fast. Yeah, relaxed <laughs> but fast. Yep, and strong. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So, which is exactly what Holly looks like out there yeah. in lane four. Holly Neville's having a great swim. For Mentone. Looks very comfortable there. 28 9. She's done that pretty comfortably. Caitlin O'Keefe takes that second, followed by Anise Johnson. Being a great swim. For Mentone. Looks very comfortable there. Some loud cheering for this one coming out here, I think, for the girls. Yes. So we've got a girl here in lane zero who says she swam in 2017. So I wonder if she didn't swim for a few years. Now mm -hmm. she's back again. Jessica Kosicic. Yep. Well, this is an interesting race. We haven't really got the winner from 2019 here. No. So, could be an interesting one, this one, to watch. It's interesting to see some of them come up straight away and others make, take underwater. advantage of that underwater. Yep. Well, I guess that underwater is free speed that you get under, you know, without breaking the surface with there's less resistance yep. for some of these guys. <clears throat> As long as you come up before that 15 metre mark. Exactly. You're all good. You're all good, yep. Looks like Steph Hunt is swimming quite well, followed though by Arwen Rogers is swimming well in lane four. Yeah, it looks and like she's Arwen. Take it, yep, she's going to take it out in a 30.06. Followed by Anna O'Reilly in a time of 30.47. And Steph Hunter in a 30.74 gets third. Rogers is swimming well. Our last race of fly. In lane up. four. Yeah, it looks and like. She's, oh, like I say, it's going to be one of their final yeah, races that they do for their school. Absolutely. Yeah. Pretty special year. Yep. I wonder if some of these girls will be pretty emotional after tonight, after they finish. Yeah. So we've got Abby again. It's Maggie. Lily Aldridge. She's been a member of Team Vic. Yep. Um year before last. Of course, we didn't have one last year. All right, here we go. Looks like a really strong start there from uh, Maggie Skews. Yeah, I think Maggie is a butterflyer. Yep. She just summoned that freestyle earlier as well. And she's looking really strong here. Yeah, she's going to win this very comfortably. And she has 28-9-8. Yeah. 
She's on the by almost three seconds there. It's a great swim. Mm. Followed by Emma Ve Van der Palen with 31.35. Actually, we've had a d dead heat for a second there. Oh, yes. Emma and Mackenzie. Mackenzie Mueller. And she has... So moving on to the freestyle now. 53. Yep. The old splash and dash in the they freestyle. Go very quickly. Blink and you two. miss it. <laughs> It's always good to see fast 50 meter freestyle times. It's one of the most exciting things to see. Yes. They get up and just rip it. You know, it's good. Some of these, maybe not so much at the younger age, but some of these swimmers may only take one breath in that 50 meters. Yeah, yeah they get up and they go. No breathing after the flags. It's one thing you would have always been told. Yeah, no, exactly gym. right. Put no, your head down. Don't no breathe those breathing. last five. That's it. Hit the wall as hard as you can. Mm hmm. Especially in a 50 freestyle where there's so much between first and eighth is barely anything. It be a fingernail. Yeah. You want to take every advantage you can get. And uh, some of these names we've already seen a few times tonight. Nell Pete, yeah. Louis Kosh, Sophie Jacker. So when was the last time you raced a 50 free, Tim? Um, I don't know. It was a while ago now, I think. <laughs> After COVID. <laughs> was freestyle Before. your thing? Or no, I was more of a breaststroker. Breaststroke so. up, yep. Yeah, so it was much with the freestyle. No. But it's probably been a while. Maybe state sprints, actually. When okay. was that? I don't know when that was. Yeah, a while ago. <laughs> okay. No training anymore? Oh, not much these days. No. 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 To get in and have a splash every now and again? Yeah, every now and then. <laughs> roll, roll the arm over. <laughs> yes, I'm afraid my daughter does not get her swimming ability from me. No? No. Where does it come from, then? I think she was born with it. Born with it? Yep. There you go. Certainly doesn't come from me or yep. her dad. Has the penguin feet when she walks. Yes. Yep. Typical breaststroker. Classic breast breaststrokers. So all, every girl in this race coming up has qualified for another stroke. Yep. So. Which shows they've had a strong, strong meet, I guess, coming up into this you know, event tonight. Yep. And they're also very talented. They can do other events at other strokes. Results from the 50 meter butterfly at year 11. In third place from MLC, Steph Hunter. In second place from Strathcote. So you're heading over to the Gold Coast to watch any of the swimming? Uh, I don't think I will be. Watch it on the swim I'll, TV. I'll watch it on my swim TV, I think, and yep. uh, just enjoy it from the couch. Nice. Yep. I think uh, I don't think I want to risk going up there and being locked up and not being able to get back. No, so. that's the dangerous <laughs> part, isn't it? Yeah. So. I guess for some of these girls here racing now, this might be their first nationals in that sort of 13, 14 year old age group too. Certainly could be. So it'd be a really good hit out for them, I think, with just the nerves coming in the next few weeks, just to have one last swim. Yeah. Practice those good finishes, those good starts, of how they want to race in a few weeks' time. Yep. So 50 freestyle would be one of the races they could be swimming there. Exactly right. So the age groupers don't do the 50s in the other strokes. But it's still good practice, I guess, if they're racing that 100. Oh, absolutely. To get, get that top end speed ready for the 100. Yes. And even just getting that technique right for yep. a couple of weeks' time. So there's a bit of a lull in proceedings here. So the girls' 50-meter freestyle are coming out now. In equal second place, from Furbank, we have Mackenzie Muller. So you'll see the same names going round and round. <laughs> also in second place from Ivanhoe is Emma Van der Poel. Give a loud cheer there for a result. Yes. And here we go. So now Pete. Swam quite well on that 100 freestyle a little bit earlier, didn't she? She did. Yep, so I'm interested in what she can now do in a 50. You'd be backing her to translate that 100 success into the 50 now. I would imagine so. <clears throat> and Lily in lane seven, who's a breaststroker. And often a breaststroker's aren't too bad at freestyle. Yep, they can always get in for that 50 yep. and rip it. It's a good start from Grace Cox in lane three from Loretto there. Results from the senior diving. 
And in fact, next to her, Anika Lim from PLC is actually having a good swim too. It's actually a really tight race it right is. now. It's hard to pick it. Yes, I wouldn't like, want to try and pick the winner yeah. from here. <laughs> it does look like Sophie Jacker might be in yeah. front as they come down to the finish. Yep. It is Sophie Jacker. Yep, yep. 29 one seven. It's a great swim. Grace Cox in second and Nell Pete in third. All three have gone under that 30 mark too, which is great to see. Yep. Just two Jack seconds in right first to the 10th yeah. there. Yeah. 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 Come down between these girls in that race. Yeah. She is Sophie Jacker. Yep. Yeah. 20. So we've already seen Kareen Tan, Miranda Gu, and Natasha Coleman in a variety of races already. We have. And a few of these other girls too are already backing up against. This would be their third race in what in less than an hour. Well, half an hour. Half an hour. They've only been swimming for yeah. half an hour. So. So. <laughs> this isn't normal circumstances for these girls. Normally they'd be racing sort of one every sort of forty-five minutes at a state championships or a nationals. You'd think. Yeah, and they'd so, get to have a swim down and. Yeah, get to warm down in between, eat something, have a drink. Not much time tonight for some of these girls. No. But I'm sure they're all pretty fit. Yeah. They'd be training a lot. Yeah. Some of these girls would. are probably training sort of six, seven times a week. Yep. And probably most in, of them doing gym sessions as well. Yep. And then fitting in comps on weekends and their schoolwork. Yes, it's a balancing act. So it shows how hard these girls actually train and, and the results that they get are, are well deserved. Yeah. Good to see the schools supporting the, some of these squad swimmers with their swimming programs yeah. to help them. I think a lot of these schools these days are yeah. sort of going back to that old system where your school sort of supports your swim club. Yeah. I think we sort of went away from that for a little bit. I but think so, but it's good to see it's come back. Yep. Because as you said, some of these girls, they train really hard. They spend a lot yeah. of hours in the water and they get up so early. And They're up at 4.30 and... They're training back that night too. Sometimes they're training twice in a day. Yeah. And fitting in school between nine till three. And then homework as well. Yeah. It's insane. <laughs> it's a tough gig. It is. But you find a lot of swimmers, by habit, are very organised. They are. Well, they have to be, don't they? They to fit do. Everything in. Yeah. So. So. I guess as well, yeah, they're training sort of, what, 16 hours a week, some of them. Mm. Yeah, 15, 16 hours. Comps on weekends. Yeah, it's pretty hard. Yep. Here they come. So these are our year eight girls coming out. So we've got all our required officials out on deck, given that this is a qualifying meet. Got to thank Swimming Victoria, don't we, for helping run, we do. run the show tonight. So all these times will count for these girls to use to qualify for other events. It's pretty awesome that, you know, Swimming Victoria on a Tuesday night helping out competitions like yep. this all the time, aren't they? Yes. We couldn't do without them, so... We couldn't. So it looks like we've got a full <coughs> field here. That yep. All the girls are there. Be good to see some 28s here. 28, 29s. Yeah, it's Turn them down, a bit fidgety. Don't want to start them until they're all nice and relaxed and ready. Ready to go. For those at home who probably don't know that if you are moving on the blocks, it is a straight disqualification. So they've got to make sure that they are still on the blocks when they say take your marks. Correct. Looks like... Uh, Kareen Tan's having a good swim. Yes. In lane three from Karawa. She's going to have also a few. It's pretty um, tight across the board, though. <laughs> you could almost throw a blanket over them. I think Karina. Might have, Miranda Goo's coming over quite strong. Oh. It's a really tight finish. Yeah, Miranda's yes. grabbed her on the touch with a 29 0 2. Just 0 0.03 and 0 0.06 separating second and third Correct. there. Correct. That's just growing your fingernails. Yep. <laughs> My Miranda Goose coming over quite strong. 
So it looks to me like all, well, the majority of these girls are swimming all the strokes. Yep. Don't see many that are just swimming once. Is there a limit on how many races these girls can race? Or can they do every single event? I'm not sure at this event, but I know yep. at some events they can only do six individual yeah. events and two relays. Yep. But um, so I think AGSV they're allowed four events in total. Okay. Is their ruling? Because I know every sort of league or. Association is different to each yeah, other. Yeah, and often the primary school students are different to the secondary. Yeah, so I think the primary school it's like two events, isn't it? Two uh, individual. Yeah, so there's less events on offer at the primary level as well. They only just do the 50s yep. and the relays, whereas once you get into the secondary, they get into the 100s and yep. even the 200s. Yep. So we're just waiting for the girls to come out now for the, the year nine, nine, 50 metre freestyle. So a couple of names here that I haven't seen tonight. Emily Price, I didn't see her before, so she might be just doing 50. I think she did some in the breaststroke. Did she? Think. Okay. Yeah. I've seen Alex Skinner. She's a Vic Centre girl. Yep. Alana Torrance, MLC. Andy Tolentino is a nunna girl. Giselle Davies swam before as well. Yep. She's and Emily Village again. I think Giselle's just about been in every event, hasn't yep, she? Yep, I think so. Every possible event. As you can see with Giselle, Andy and Emily have all swum every year possible. Mm. And actually, Emily won this event in 2019, so a bit of a smoker out in lane seven, potentially yep. in this race. So at this age, they'd be used to swimming against the same girls all the time. Yeah. Whereas, as you know, once you move into open age swimming, it's You're racing everyone, I guess. It's yeah. a whole lot different. Yeah, these girls would know each other pretty well, I think, by uh, year 12. Yeah. <laughs> from racing each other. I wonder if it's still warm out there or if the night air is starting, starting to, to kick in. settle in and a bit chilly. And Melbourne with an outdoor pool as well. <laughs> you can get all four seasons in one night. Absolutely. I think we've just about come to the end of our outdoor season of racing. Season, yep. Yeah, thank goodness. We're good to move indoors soon, I think. <laughs> yes, they'll move into short course season after nationals. Yep, into the 25 metre indoor pool. Provided we can keep COVID at bay. <laughs> Fingers crossed. Yes. All right, here we go. So lots of A's here. Amelie, Alex, Alana, Andy. <laughs> <laughs> We've got Amelia and Emily. Yep. Alessandra. Andy. <laughs> and then we've got the G's, Georgia, Giselle and Greta. Yeah. So... Looks really tight as I come down that first 25 here. Look at lane zero. She's... As we were saying before, in a 50, though, it can be so tight between that first to 10th anyway. Yeah. <clears throat> Anyone can win it if you've got a lane. Does look like Giselle... Oh, it's Davey between four and Torrance. five. Yeah. yeah Alana. Like, she's touched her up by 0.1 of a second there. 20, 27, 4-4. Four, four. Four. It's a really quick swim. Oh, there's those records up on the board, Tim. So oh, the yeah, record in are. that event was a 26-6-5. Six, six, yeah. That's a, a great swim by those girls there, considering that they've already raced three or four times so far tonight with no warm down. They're For still sure. throwing down 27s. Yep. Does look so like Giselle. Oh, it's between four and five. Yeah. How tight that finish really was. Just point one between the two. I think it's been, they've both been pretty tight all night in terms of their finishes and their races in the 100 free and the mm. 50 fly. I think they were both... Right next to each other. So we're just waiting for the uh, Year 10 girls to come out next. Holly Neville, a name we've 
seen a few times tonight. So she yes. won it in 2019 and has qualified fastest again tonight from Mentone. And then Clara Seidel next to her in five. Charlotte Fay. Well, Charlotte Fay qualified sixth in 2019, has qualified third tonight. Third, so yeah. Sort of moved up the rankings a bit. And we've got some breaststrokers and some backstrokers and all very versatile, these girls. Yeah, I feel like the butterflies, backstrokes and breaststrokers all come together in the in the freestyle, don't they? Yeah. So just waiting for the girls to come out now. There's a bit of a delay from them coming out right now. But yeah, we'll be watching this race next next three age groups where these girls are only taking one one or two breaths. Yep. We may see some times that are sort of 26, 27, low 27s, 26s. May even see a 25 if we're lucky. Oh, that'd be good tonight. That'd be very good. Here they come now. Here's our start list. Ching Ching Kui in lane two. She was at the All Juniors on the weekend. Yep. How'd she go? I can't remember, can't to be remember. honest. <laughs> a lot of races on the weekend. Lots of 50-metre races. Yep. I think I spoke for three hours straight. Yep, okay. <laughs> Commentating those races. Yep. All right, here we go. As we were saying before, it's really important to have a great start in this freestyle and no breathing off those first few strokes. No, especially the first one. It's a really good start from Charlotte Fay, actually. And Holly Neville is looking pretty strong too. In yeah, she'll four. be hard to beat, I yeah, think. Yeah, she's looking really strong now. She's sort of uh, put a bit of a gap on the other girls. She's coming down the wall. Yeah. 27-3, there we go. Some 27 lows now. Yep. She's ended up winning that pretty comfortably too, by almost a second. Yeah, she's the only one yeah, out of the Yeah. 27. Now three. Three. There, there we go. go. Freestyle. Domi Maloney, we saw her earlier. Mm -hmm. She's qualified fastest in lane four from MLC. She came yeah, second two years ago. Though. Yeah. Yes, I think she's taken. A bit of a, a back step there training, we go. so yep. she's co concentrating more on school possibly at the moment. Yep, which is always fair enough, I think. As we were saying before, managing everything. Yeah, it can be really organized. tough. It is really hard. Swimming is such a uh, all or nothing sort of sport in that way, in That's that sense. certainly is. I think Madeline Marshall swam quite well earlier tonight too from Sacre Coeur and Claire Milligan. Yes, and Amelia Chilaro in lane seven. She's a backstroker, but I know she can swim freestyle too. Talented She'll be the um, heading off to nationals next week. Do you know what she's swimming? Backstroke. Backstroke? Yeah. Yep, just the 100 and 200? I think so, and I think she may even be in a 200 IM. Okay, yep. Shows how talented some of these girls are. And now yes. backing up in the freestyle. So we could have a missing swimmer in lane two if Maddie Hook is not here. Yep. It's interesting that Claire Milligan in lane five actually qualified ninth in 2019. It's now the second fastest tonight. Mm. So it shows how much she's improved in the last two years. Two years, yep. Since we last raced here. It's funny, some of these swimmers I've noticed that had that break seem to have come back quite strong. And I think that had a lot to do with the amount of 
dry land work that they yeah. did over COVID. You know, a lot of them were doing a lot of gym work and yep, yeah, a lot of core running, riding. Yep, I guess Pilates. And, yeah, Pilates and things at home. Yep, which is only going to help you swimming. So if you didn't have a have your own backyard pool, yeah, you had to do something else. Well, you couldn't get to the beach. Get the therabands out. <laughs> yep. It also shows how great these girls are in athletes in terms of they can have a big break, come back, and yep. still hit the times that they were doing in heavy training. Yep. So. I think as well, maybe the break was beneficial for some of these guys. They've been training hard for a long time. Mm. It's good for a refresher, have a bit well, of a break, come back. There's been a lot of records broken in some of the meets that have come back since COVID. Yeah. So even the... Uh, virtual meet we had the short course meet there were quite a few records knocked yeah. off there so it certainly hasn't harmed a lot of them yes I said I think people have just come back refreshed mm. motivated and hungry to train all right so they're underway in the girls year 11 50 minute freestyle now so it looks like Maddie's here for this one so maybe she was late maybe got stuck in the traffic yeah it was a fair bit of traffic <laughs> in the way in does look like uh, Maddie Marshall from Sacre Coeur in lane three. Yep. Might be leading him at the moment. I think but um, it's really tough. Tommy's hot on her yeah, heels Tommy though. Yeah, Tommy Milone is coming home really strong. And then she's got... Amelia Chilaro has also come home strong. Oh. Yep, Amelia Chilaro has got him. She's touched her out. 27.9. Yeah. yeah. She has touched them out. Home. All by point zero really one of a second. Over, over in Tommy lane Milone. seven. She's got... Amelia Chilaro has yeah. also race come home strong. It doesn't matter what lane you're in. You can win that from anywhere. Oh, absolutely. Especially in a 50. So oh, yeah. is coming so home really strong. the last really of the 50 strong. freestyle yep. coming up now. I believe we Lafoe's back in it. Amelia Chilara has also she's come home Maggie strong. again. Yep. I, I'm sure these two have raced each other maybe 20, 30 times oh, at GSV. At least. <laughs> at <laughs> maybe least. more than that. <laughs> well, if they've raced in four, four 50s and 100 for you know, five years, yep. plus relays. Maggie was a country girl. She was from yep. Wangaratta and moved down to MLC. MLC so. Yep. Olivia Newins in this race again as well. She used to be a very good swimmer from LMC. Yeah, so I used to see her swim when she was, I think, nine. Nine, ten. Yeah, she yep. used to race for a long time. She did. Yeah. I think Delilah Goodwin in lane six will also be one to watch here. Qualified yes. second in 2019. So funny to think some of these girls are probably only 17 and it seems like they've been around forever. Yeah, <laughs> they've been racing for a long time. <laughs> and some of these girls have probably raced at an open national level for a couple of years too. Yes, I know. Liv Lafoe. <clears throat> well, some of these girls, you know, 17, this would be their... Because there was no nationals last year, yeah. so a lot of these girls would have missed their last year of age, age nationals. Age nationals, yeah. So moving into open now. Because... Open girl starts at 18 now, doesn't it? 17, 17 now. Yeah, yep. so, but you can choose to either swim in the 17, 18 category or you can yep. choose to swim in the open, open. category. Yep. So it's good to have that choice. Exactly. Well, I think Olivia Lafoe has made a fair few open national finals the last couple of years. I think she made it short course recently, came top 10. Yep. So she's been an amazing swimmer for a few years now. Yes, her and my daughter have a friendly rivalry in the pool. Friendly rivalry, <laughs> yep. So all of these girls have swum another event. There's not one girl here that hasn't already swum tonight. Yep. Here we go. For some of these girls as well, it might be their last ever race. Um, if they're not doing relays. Oh, I've got the backstroke to come, but yep. it could be potentially their last ever GSV race. Could be. It does look like Olivia Lafoe has got a bit of a lead at the moment. 
Maggie Skews next to her, though, is still an Adelaide skipper of both. Right with her for the finish, but Olivia Lafoe is going to get them. Yeah. 27.05. There we go. Followed by Maggie Skews in a 27.63. Yeah, so just Adelaide the two skipper. of them under 28. Now moving on to the backstroke. Yep. Will these girls be using the wedge tonight for the backstroke? It doesn't Do look like it. I can't see it both. Out. Use Right with the, the finish, but Olivia Lafoe is going to get when the wedge them. first got introduced yeah. for the backstroke start. Loved it, and some people were like, oh, yeah. not sure about it. Yeah, some of them still choose not to use it, even yeah. if it is available. It's personal choice, I guess. Yep. So, did you swim any backstroke at all? Oh, no, I'm not, I'm not a backstroker, no. no. So, I didn't get the pleasure of using the wedge, so <laughs> I wouldn't, wouldn't know how, how, it, worked, how it worked. <laughs> I know they can be temperamental to put in and out. Yeah, and I've, I've noticed them. a few Swimming Victoria officials getting pretty frustrated taking them on and off all the yeah, time. Yeah, and they get tangled up. <laughs> and Especially in a medley relay when you've got people standing behind the blocks yelling and carrying on. Yep. The officials have to get in there and take them off. <laughs> I think a great change, though, to I think swimming in general here in Victoria is the self-marshalling that we have now. Yes, I think you'll find that could be here to stay. I think it's a great idea. I think it saves so much time now where athletes can go to their warm down properly, come back, yep. get their 10 minutes before their race relaxed, not yep. have to sit down and wait 20 minutes before their race. Correct. And also the responsibility is back on them now yeah. to be organised to know when they're actually racing. And that marshalling room's usually still there available if they want to go in there and just have some quiet time before yeah, their just race. Yeah, sit down and chill out. Yep. Some people you'll notice will sit in the corner and won't talk to anyone. Yeah, others will like to down. chat. And others, yeah. yeah. Every person's different, I think, before they race. Yep. What works for one doesn't necessarily work exactly for another. Exactly right. But um, it's had great success so far, the self-marshalling. It has, yeah. I think even the little kids are... Learning how to use it too. So well, it's we don't get many kids that miss their race. Yeah. So, and even if they do, we usually manage to put them in another heat. Yeah. So we can. Yeah, exactly. Out come the year seven girls for the 50 meter backstroke. Lily Kosh in lane four from MLC. She's a tall girl. You see yep. her walking out next to some of these other girls. She yep. towers over them. Grace Cox from Loretto as well, and Nika Lim. We've seen their names a couple of times tonight. We actually have got a couple of swimmers in this race who haven't actually swum tonight. So it's good to see Emma Chang from Ivanhoe, Rose Donald, and Anika Sinapu from Camberwell. Yep. Also in their first event for the night. So it doesn't look like we haven't got any wedges tonight. No, not the tonight. Backstroke. So swimming upside down now. On their back, here they go. I think it's always easy to swim uh, backstroke indoor as well because you can always find something on the roof that you can to follow, yeah. to follow and look along with. Yeah, you run into that lane rope yeah, and it's... a demon in the backstroke, isn't it? <laughs> it's pretty, it can really hurt. So it looks like Lily Kosh swimming really well in ML, from MLC in lane four. She's having a really strong swim, actually. Yeah, she's pulling away from them. Yep. This is going to be a great swim, actually. She's gone a 32.59 and won that comfortably in the end by two seconds. Yeah. I think Grace Cox got second there in a 34.56. Annika. Lim in a 35.40. Yeah, unusual that. Lily's a breaststroker. So. Yeah. Shows how well she's going with her training. Yep. She's another Wadding girl. Yep. She's gone on a 32.59. New names coming up here. And one that.
So these girls, I'm not sure how many rounds of swimming they've had to go through to get to this level. I think it's three, isn't it? Or two. I think you have your qualifiers, your finals in your division, and mm. then tonight's the big final night, including yep. all three divisions with the top swimmers. And then some of these girls would be also able to swim at the School Sport Victoria State Championships State if champs. their school's associated. With that. Yeah. Yep. So and that's... Oh, it's nearly, it's nearly April already. I feel like I just turned the calendar over yeah, for March and I'm about to turn it over again. It's time's moving quickly at the moment. So, yeah, you wouldn't believe a year ago where we were. No, no swimming. No. no nothing. No toilet paper. No, there was nothing <laughs> available at all. Swinging right. those arms around, getting warmed up. It's good to see as well that they're all rugged up when they walk out. You don't want to be coming out. Yeah, just really important. To be warm before your race. Yes, keep your feet warm. That's what yeah. you kick with. Exactly. <laughs> I know a lot of people have said you lose a lot of your warmth through if you have are barefoot. Yeah, so it's especially important. on the cold yeah, um, so. concrete or whatever they are, tiles out there. So it looks like Alice Evans from Loreno in lane four. Has a slight lead at the moment of Angela Liu and Tiffany Lamb. Having a good swim though in lane one actually from is Sophia, Sophia Lyons, Lyons from Furbank. She might be looking at getting second in and lane eight, uh, Kareen Tan also having a good swim. Alice 32.94. In the end, Angela Liu got second in 35.08. And Kareen Tan did get third in a 35-1-8. Swim. Uh, Kareen Tan also having Moving a good swim. Moving into the U9 nine girls. girls. Yep. Alice, 32, so, nine, Davey. four. A couple of new names Andy here. Andy Tolentino. Oh, Zoe Bazile in lane eight. I know Zoe. Zoe. Yep. She'll be heading off to nationals for the first time this year. From LMC? Yes. Yeah. So she'll be heading over to the Gold Coast. Yep. With her brother, who also swims. Oh, that's exciting times ahead for yeah. the Seals. I've noticed here that uh, Georgia, Maddie, Giselle, Amelia, Andy, Alexandra, and Annabelle have all swum every year. So these girls will be quite familiar for them right now, racing each other again for the. They would. Sort of. What, third or fourth time? Mm. Actually, probably second because they missed last year. So, Yes, we keep forgetting that Sorry, 2020 was that. a write-off. <laughs> so this is these girls on their second GSV I Correct. Guess, competition. So. But Amelia Blake is the reigning champion So, from MLC. First whistle, get in the water, and then the second whistle, get ready. All right, and they're off. Looks like it's a really good start there from lane five there, Andy Tolentino. What a tight race, actually. Yeah, all four, actually, from lane zero to lane four, it's pretty tight all the way across it right is. now. It does look like Amelia Blake may have a slight lead, though, now. Yeah. And she's going to take it out. Yep. 31.5. 31.5, yep. Andy Tolentino second in a 31.92. Followed by Alexandra Skinner in a 32.48. Now moving on to the year 10 girls, 50 metre backstroke. Took it some, once again, a couple of swimmers they who have haven't swum tonight. Lead so now. They may actually come yeah. into a fresh year. And yeah. she's going to take it out. Arabella, Emma, Emma yep. sorry, and Anna. Yep. 
This will be their first swim of the night. It's always exciting when you see a swimmer come from lane zero or lane nine, come from nowhere sometimes. Yeah, outside smokers. Yeah. And uh, just here over the marshalling of the announcer there that the uh, the relay teams are to head head down. So Oh, yeah, well, they'd be getting very close, wouldn't they? It's always exciting when the relays come out. I think it's the best time of the night. So we'll have a medley relay and then a freestyle, freestyle relay. relay. Yep. Siren going there somewhere. Yeah, <laughs> everything going on here at MSAC right now. Yep. <clears throat> they go. I was going to mention here that Allah Jess. <clears throat> and Scarlett has some every year possible in this uh, girl's 50 metre backstroke. That's great. So, had good experience in this event. But it does look like in lane three, uh, Ella Louis Morang. Yeah, two and three. So yeah, lane two's going quite well too. Emma Gregory in her yeah. first race tonight. So, the fresh legs might be coming through. It's like. Ooh. Looks, it looks like Ella might have them here at the moment. And she's going to touch them. Yeah. Yep. She's held on. Lots of screams from the yeah, crowd she's there. she's gone 32-6-6 to take it out. It's a great swim. Yep. And second there, Jess O'Donnell has got second. Yeah, 32-9-6. For Ella Robertson-Brown in third and a 33-6-2. Yeah, the year yeah, 11. Year 11. Yep. Now look out for Amelia in lane four. Yep, the She's, backstroker. She is a backstroker, yep. yep. So I would expect her to... Come through pretty strong in this one. I think so. Yep. Well, she's got Madeline Marshall and Anna Aurelia around her. So I think all three have swam a fair bit tonight. So yep. Once again, we've got Sophia, Rose and Margot in their first swims tonight as well. All righty, so the girls, you're 11, 50 minute backstroke. So Deb's tipping uh, Amelia here is going to have a big swim. Yes, so I think we'll so. There we go. Whoops, I can't see a lane four. Oh, is she a late? Oh, yeah, there she, she is. She's oh, there. She is there. <laughs> Rightio. May have gone a bit early on the call, maybe. <laughs> Sounds like we might have an emergency swimmer coming up to coming swim in this one. Here. Yep. So we're not sure who's pulled out though at this stage. No. Looks like lane zero has pulled out. Charlotte Hall has yeah, she? Yeah. So we've got Steph Hunter in lane zero up on the board. Yep. So she's taken Charlotte Hall's spot. Yep. Tonight. MLC. It's also really interesting with the backstroke start too for those watching at home that the different sort of positions people will put their feet in. Some yeah. people have them level with each other. One will have one higher than the other. Yep. Some will have them further out of the water. Some people start in the water lower. Yep. So it just sort of depends on each person where they start and how far out they go. Yeah. 
Looks to be a really strong swim from Amelia, as there you said. Goes. Madeline Marshall next to her is having a great swim too. Looks like she'll get second. 31.71, that is a great swim. Looks like Madeline's had a soft touch on the yeah, wall. The port, time's there just come go. up. Yep. 32.74 for second. Followed by Aria Lehman in a 33.61. And so here's the year 12 girls back straight. This will be their last individual race of their GSV career. It will. So Olivia Lafoe again. Yeah, great swim to Lila Goodwin, Joanna Stathoulis. These girls have all, Olivia Newen, these girls have all been racing tonight a few times. Yep. 31 7 1. That is. Live and live in four and five. Yep. I know they're both good friends as well. Yep. And both predominantly backstrokers. Yep. They're looking pretty friendly as they come out here too. Having a joke. Having a wave. There. I think we've got some of the relay girls coming out straight after them too. <laughs> so we've got a lot of people <laughs> marching on the pool deck right now. Everyone's yeah, waving. They're waving at the waving cameras. Waving to the cameras. Yeah. <laughs> Hi, girls. <laughs> some of them are being sent back inside. Yeah, they've been sent back. Stay, go and stay warm. So I'd be tipping uh, Olivia Lafoe is going to be pretty hard to beat in this one. I would as imagine backstroke so. is her main event. Yeah. She's good at everything else, but I think <laughs> backstroke's her best of yeah of her of her strokes. And they're off. Here we go. The last 50 of the night. Pretty sure we had to realize. she'll. Pretty sure she'll have this one all to herself. I'd say. Yep. She is looking pretty strong there, Livy Lafoe, from MLC. Oh, sorry, Loretto. Sorry. She used to swim at MLC. She did used to swim at MLC at Nana Wadding now. And Livy Lafoe is having a really strong swim here. Yeah. She's going to smash it. Oh, she's gone 33.3. The record is 30.00. She actually wasn't oh, that far off the no. time there. It's a great swim considering she's already raced four or five times tonight. Yep. So that was the end of our individual events for this evening. We went to the U7 relay. Into the relay. They looked pretty now. excited, these girls, before they came out for that relay, <laughs> just in the U7 girls. So I'm sure we're going to hear a bit of noise. Yeah. I reckon they were pretty loud in that marshalling room, too. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> It can get quite hectic in there. Yeah, yeah. I've always felt for the uh, yeah. officials sometimes dealing with some of the kids <laughs> in the marshal room. Smash you it. have to go home with a headache. Yeah, I can imagine Ooh, that. So yeah. Yeah. And three, a uh, three, 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 three normally. Mm -hmm. I've been known to blow my whistle in the official in the marshalling room. Oh, I can imagine. <laughs> on occasion, I can imagine get, that. <laughs> get some order. I know I got yelled at a couple of times by the Swim Victoria officials for uh, being too loud or not listening. Tim. It's all part of the rite of passage, I think, because <laughs> a swimmer, you get yelled at by a Swim Victoria official. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> We're getting a few waves on the camera here. <laughs> From the girls, yep. <laughs> <laughs> We're having a giggle. It's not so much in the medley, but in the freestyle relay, it's always interesting what tactics you use, whether you go fastest to slowest, fastest last, in the middle. Yeah. And in these ones, whether you put your best swimmer in their best stroke or do you put them in where you're your weakest to try and even it up. Yeah. It's always really interesting to see. So it's almost ready for those relays. Best part of the night now. It's always fun organising the relays. Mm -hmm. Who goes at what end? Make sure everyone's in the right lane. 
I've seen a few relays where someone is ready to swim and they look up and there's no one at the other end. Yep. <laughs> I know a few swimmers where uh, they've rocked up late, in, uh, not even in their bathers for a relay. <laughs> they've had to jump the fence and uh, just give them the blocks in their speedos and, <laughs> and off they go in the relay. <laughs> Yes. And have a Swimming Victoria official come and tell them afterwards that, uh, hey, that's not on. No, that's <laughs> right. But as I said, yeah, it's really interesting here whether you put your best swimmer in their best of best stroke or you put them in your weakest area to try and even it up. Yep. So there should be some good tactics here in this race. And often you'll see some big lead changes in a medley relay because some swimmers aren't as strong in that breaststroke or backstroke yep. or butterfly. It's always fun at some of these school events. They always forget the order. <laughs> yeah, they do. Because some of these girls aren't swimmers as well. They're, yeah. They're sort so of in the relay. Like I tell them the it, it's always alphabetical order. What, backstroke, breaststroke, breaststroke butterfly. butterfly. Bre so even You're if right, you, you are right. Yeah. Even if you shorten it to fly, it's you still You're in right. alphabetical order. I had to think about that one for a second. <laughs> <laughs> It's been a long day. It's hard to remember. <laughs> <laughs> so we're starting from the uh, scoreboard end now. Yep. 50 metres of each stroke. We should see actually a really good start here from this end now. There you go. So, oh, I've had a great start. It's really important here as well in a relay is nailing that, that changeover. Yeah, Absolutely. Moving. Um, you know, that, that changeover. I yeah. You've got you to practice these changeovers all the time at training with and the kids. And there's so many different ways you can do it. There is, yeah. And you've got to be yeah, we'll, careful we'll you these, don't break. Yeah, we'll see these techniques now. We'll see some will go with the double feet where they'll move into it. Yep. Some will do the athletic track start. Yep. Some will do the arm swing. Just mm -hmm. depends on each person. Yeah, you just got to. You don't want to break because you don't want to be the reason exactly. your team gets yep. disqualified. I know you also want to be sort of moving on the blocks in a relay as they're coming in, but not leave the blocks yeah, too early. It's so very it's a fine, line. fine, it is. You've got to make sure you go just at the right time. Yep. So the girl doing the breaststroke here's MLC getting quite a good lead. Is it MLC? Is it Loretto? Sorry. Well, it is MLC. It's MLC, it yeah. MLC, sorry. I'm not sure who the swimmers are. Their names aren't coming up on the, the board. board but yep. MLC is putting a very strong swim here, though. <laughs> yeah, they're a bit of a miles, miles yep. in front now. They're a long way in front. Looks like it's going to be a race for uh, for second right now between PLC and Loretto. Yeah. Because I think MLC are going to be pretty hard to catch here in this last 50. Yeah. Here we go. Let's watch this changeover as they come in. It's a pretty safe changeover, yep, that one. Yeah, I think so. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yeah, so you'll see our officials will be watching closely. Exactly. It's really important that butterfly as well to finish on that full stroke for your changeover so your freestyle knows when you're actually going to hit the wall. Exactly. But so yeah, it does look like MLC is going to take this one away pretty easily. Very easily, I don't think. You'd be catching her now. Yeah, so the record's 2.02, so they're not going to quite get near that one tonight, but still an amazing swim. Yeah, good finish. Just look at that record, though, 2.02. That's 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 what? fast. <laughs> that's seriously <laughs> quick. <laughs> I'd like to know what year that was. Yeah. So and who take those out. swimmers were. Yeah, so Loretto takes it second and PLC in third. So as seated, pretty that's, much. That's that's fast. <laughs> that's seriously <laughs> quick. <laughs> this looks like in uh, the year eights that uh, MLC is once again the fastest qualifiers. Yeah, this. well they're in that lane four, the top spot. Yep. Or maybe they have, oh, I thought maybe they have allocated lanes, but no, I'm pretty sure it's seated according to their entry time. So, yep. so MLC could be looking for uh, two relay tiles here. It looks like here. MLC are in lane four for all of the medley events. Okay. 
Oh, my screen. Yep. Cool. All right. Oh, no, good. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So, uh, got a bit of a break in the swimming now, but it's been a good night so far. It's been some great swims. There has been. It seems to have gone really well. I haven't seen any... I don't think there's been any DQs. Yeah, it's a good night when there's no DQs. Yeah, absolutely. Yep. Well, there's been some good skills too, I think, from these girls tonight. Like, Yep, we've seen some really good like underwater work. Yeah. And yep. yep. It is always hard to see the underwaters and dives in a 52 compared yep. to that 100. But yep. been some great swims, I think. When you think about no warm downs, you know, not much time in between each race. Yeah. It's been some great swims. I wonder if these girls will be expected to go to school at 9 o'clock tomorrow morning. <laughs> Surely the teachers are giving the morning off. <laughs> You'd think so, wouldn't I'd you? I hope they haven't got PE tomorrow. Ooh. They'd yeah, be pretty hard backing it up would. for a bit. It would. <laughs> and you'd hope that their swimming coach is giving the morning off tomorrow. Yeah, uh, I don't think so. Don't think so. <laughs> They'll be back there training again. I reckon they'd be back in the pool tomorrow morning. Back in the pool tomorrow morning. They'd be saying no, no rest. Straight back into it. Yep. Yep. Nationals is around the corner. Yeah, got to get, get ready to go. I guess every, every session counts now with just two weeks to go. So we're not able to show this race because we don't have consent from yep. any some particular swimmers to show this race. So you have to listen to us for a bit. Yeah, <laughs> sorry guys. And <laughs> <laughs> you got to look at our, look at us on the screen too, unfortunately. Yeah, I know. <laughs> it's been a long day. Yeah. But we've got a few events to go now, and yes, we've got the Year so Nine girls for the medley up next, which yeah, should be we'll exciting. A few more medleys, and then some freestyle relays. Yep. I think nine thirty is our supposed finish time. I think we'll finish on time tonight too. Yep. So should be good. But as I said earlier, I think it's the best time of night is when you get the relays in, because I think you get a lot of kids who actually aren't swimmers who are there who just qualified as part of a team. Yeah. And they come in for a relay and they give it everything they got. Yeah. Which I think it always adds to the night. Yep. So it's always good. Yes, yeah, because you'll find there's some schools that do have swimmers, but not yep. enough to make up a relay team. Yeah. So then they'll... They go out and recruit kids who haven't yeah. really swum much. And yeah. And some of these guys are seriously talented who don't swim at all. They can get in and do a 50 freestyle yeah. and throw it at like a 32. Yep. It's pretty insane. Yes. So... So we've got the year nine... Girls coming around now, so it does look like MLC is taking that one out. Alrighty. So just having a look at this next uh, relay. OLMC, Melbourne... MLC, Loretto, Wrighton, Furbank, and Genizana have all qualified this relay before every year. So yep. it seems like the same old teams make it every year. Yeah. Just shows how consistent these guys are. And they've obviously got a good team of four that can do, they've got a swimmer who's good at you know, each stroke. Yep. So Strathcona, PLC, and Sacre Coeur in it for the first time. Getting up there, ready. So just looking, uh, in 2019, Mentone actually won this one. And they've qualified second fastest. And MLC came seventh. And they've qualified fastest tonight. So should be a good one to watch here. Yep. It looks like Wrighton's actually going quite well in lane six. They came third a couple of years ago. I'm trying to pick who some of these swimmers are while they're going down the pool, but <laughs> yeah, it's, it's quite very hard, hard to it? pick yeah. them. It is really hard, especially the cap and goggles. Because <laughs> they're all wearing their school caps now. Yes. As we're just saying, there's some good changeovers too. But it does look like at uh, MLC again, looking pretty strong. They've got a quite a strong lead though, but only 100 metres down. Things can change in a relay. They certainly can. Although that's a pretty handy lead yeah, in the breaststroke. They're so coming to the breaststroke now. 
It's a good change over there. Watch the change over here. With Mentone and Wrighton from Furbank. Looks like in lane one, actually, Melbourne's going quite well, too. But I think Mentone's in second. Sorry, LMC, sorry. Oh, my bad. My bad, guys. Lane four. So MLC looking really strong here to finish. So this could be their third relay win uh, in a row here in the medley. Yep. So having a good night. <laughs> Another very comfortable lead. Yeah. Well, they do have a very strong swimming club outside of the school. I they think do. a lot of these girls would probably swim at the school. Yeah, you know, they go yeah. to school straight afterwards, which is a great advantage that they have. Absolutely. There we go. Yep. So a few seconds outside yeah, the record. Six, yeah. Still an insanely quick time, though. 2.06 in a medley relay. Mm. Loretto in second at 2.14.81. And I think Furbank got in third there. Yeah, 2.15.9. Yeah. So I think all of these Still an insanely relays. quick time though. Two or six MLC. in a medley real life. Been in lane four. <laughs> yeah. I just looked over except for the year, year 12s. twelve. Yeah. They're not in the medley. They're not in the medley relay, which is surprising. So, what's happened there? Don't know. <laughs> Coming up for the uh, year ten girls now. So Ivanhoe, Furbank, MLC, Mentone, Wright and Loretto and Genzano have all swum every year possible for these girls. So, as we're just saying, a strong team from Year 7 sort yep. of correlates all the way through, I think, into a strong team into Year 10, Year 11, Year 12. Yeah. Off they go. It's always, as we said, important with that good underwater there and in lane four, I think had a great start from MLC. She did. Mentone's thrown down the challenge in lane yeah, five. Yeah, Mentone's going quite well here. Well, they won it two years ago, so. Yep. Um, yeah, so she'll get the first change over there in lane five. Yep. Oh, uh, MLC's, actually, no, I think it might be uh, Lauriston out there in lane zero. Oh, we missed Let them. the first. First 50 there, so a bit of a smoker out there Ooh, in lane zero. Yes. Breaststroke is coming down now. I think MLC might have the lead now. But Furbank's going well right next to them there. Too. Actually, I think Furbank might have the lead now. It's very close. Yep. Now for the all-important butterfly. Yeah, I think Furbank is going to touch him first here. At the 100 mark. And a good changeover too from both teams. So it looks like there's three teams who can win this here. MLC, Fairbank and Mentone. Yeah, Mentone's so coming back in the be butterfly really here. Tight. Yeah, Mentone's having a great swim here in the butterfly. Someone in lane six has been disqualified. It's quite hard to tell here uh, who's actually going to get them at the touch. As we come down, we're going to see here. I think MLC might have the lead just... They do. Yep. Yep. Down to the freestyle. So it is a strong swim from MLC here in the freestyle, but Fairbank's still there with them. It's going to be hard to make up this much ground, though, now. Yeah, she's pulling away now. Yep. Yep. It's a great swim in the end from MLC again. 2 11, 3 4, they've taken it out. And Fairbank, Mento, and so those three teams were pretty much. Pretty even across the board. Yep. There's a really good change over there from MLC from that butterfly into that freestyle, I think, mm. too. It probably helped separate them there. I think so. Moving on to the year 11s now. 
And guess who's in lane four? Lane MLC again. <laughs> They've got a very good program down there, so... 2-11-3-4, they've taken it out. So having a look at this next one, we've got um, MLC, Furbank, Loretto, Lowther Hall and Wrighton all sum this every year again. Um, Strathcona for the first time, and same with Lauriston, so... Lowther Hall, is that the first time I've seen them in the relay? I haven't, I haven't heard them much tonight, no. no. So... Who knows, maybe they can be the smokers out... Never know. Right they're in lane eight. Every lane has a chance. Exactly right. You got a lane, you got a chance. <laughs> That's it. I see the okay, difference yeah. in some of these backstroke girls. Yeah. Like most of these girls are all kicking above the water, but some of them keep their kick down low yeah, the and there's not much kick. splash. Yeah. Well, it looks like in lane three there from I've I've known having a great swim. So they're going to take the lead at the first 50 here. And they came ninth two years ago, so... But it's not over yet, isn't it? So you've got to see how their breaststroke and butterfly go in the freestyle. Yeah, so that breakout and the breaststroke is very important. You can go as far as you, your breakout will carry you in that breaststroke. Yeah. Even past the 15 metre mark if you're able. Yep. I know a couple of coaches have always said as well on the breaststroke in a 50... It's important not to overrate. I think some people might get into that habit of going yeah, too hard Yeah, sometimes it can slow you down yeah, the faster so you, you that, try to go. Yeah, you want to try and keep your rate up high, but we're actually catching water I think, yeah. with your hands. So look, Ivan and are still going to take the lead out though at the 100 mark, but MLC have definitely made up some ground. Let's see what these butterflies are going to do. So MLC... Underwaters yeah. was really yeah. strong then. So MLC have taken the lead now. <clears throat> Been a bit of a trajectory for MLC. They came fourth in 2017, second in 2018, first in 2019, and looks like they're going to come first again this year. So it looks like MLC are going to pull away again here, and Ivanhoe's looking good for second. But yeah, I think the race will be for third but here. Strathcona and Furbank are going, look like they're going to fight it out for third. Potentially PLC could fight back for third too. Could even have a fight for second on our hands here yeah, by the looks of it. the last. Strathcona's coming home really strong here at <laughs> Ivanhoe. They've made up a lot of ground. Yep. But I've never going to hang on to get second. They will. And then Strathcona in for third. That was actually a great last 50 by those girls there from uh, PLC, Strathcona and Furbank. Yeah, they made up quite a lot of ground. Yeah. All right, the year 12 girls now. So Loretto are our front runners here. But I'm not going to hang yep. on to get No, second. MLC in this well. No, Different. very interesting. And then Strath. It's only a handful of races left. Yep. So Loretto are the reigning champs in this one. Looks like a really good start there from, uh, is it OLMC in lane five? Yep. 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 So it looks like OLMC is going to take it out of the first 50 though with Loretto next to them in lane four. Yep, so, well, so our ladies have got a uh, yep. second lead over Loretto. Oh, some great underwater there in lane four. Yep. She's come Loretto, up in yeah. front well and truly there. So 
So, yes, breaststroke. It's one of those strokes, isn't it? You yeah. either love it or you hate it. Exactly right. <laughs> They say breaststroke is a born, not made. Yeah. I think it's such a different stroke as well, the movements that you do with your hips and your knees. So technical. Yeah. I know a lot of coaches have said it's the hardest stroke to coach as well. Yeah. I would. And you don't want to change too many things with them. I think if a breaststroker learns to breaststroke that way, it's yeah. you sort of want to leave it with them and build them up with whatever they got. That's right. Really strong fly leg here too. Yeah. So Loretta are looking really strong. So our ladies have dropped back a bit here, but looks like Genizano in lane six are having a good swim. They might touch in second actually here in lane six. Looks like it. And Wrighton in lane three going pretty well. They might touch in third. Ooh. ILMC have touched in third. So Wrighton in fourth. Vincent so, are not far behind. Yeah, so this actually be a really good last 50 here between these three for second because it looks like Loretto's going to take this one out, but Genizano, OLMC, and Wrighton fighting it out for third. <laughs> and even Furbank fighting it out for third. Yes, the race is second on. Second and third. Second and third. It's going to be close. So OLMC looking strong here for second, but Loretto's going to take it out, and they do. Yeah, 215.66. Yep, yeah. OLMC to 218.88. Amazing. And that was the end of our medley relays. Yep. Move on to the uh, freestyle now. Always enjoy the freestyle the most, I think. Yeah, I think relays. so. Take it out. So one do. race each for each year level. Yep. Yeah, 215.66. As I was saying, do you put your fastest swimmer first? Do you put them last? Do you put them second or third? What would you do? Well, I think they either have to be first or last. Yep. Either to get a head start yep. or to bring it home. Yep. I think yeah. that's generally the, the tactic they use, isn't it? Yep, I think so. I think everyone just thinks back to Ian Thorpe in the uh, freestyle relay and they try and emulate that. Replicate that, <laughs> yep. If it worked for him, if it worked for Thorpe, it works for us. <laughs> exactly. That's what <laughs> Just look up at that record there. It's 149.6. Wow. That's a, uh, that's, a pretty, <laughs> that's a pretty quick time. Certainly is. Yeah. So I think Loretto's in lane five here looking really strong. With MLC in lane four again next to him. <laughs> yeah, so Loretto have touched him first here. 29.6 to start out that first 50. It's pretty quick. Yeah. So Loretto are looking quite strong. MLC are chasing her down rapidly. Yep. I know some coaches' tactics for a relay have been fastest to slowest. So you go your fastest swimmer and then gradually gets down to your last and one. hope you, they can hold on. Yeah, you hope they can just hang in there and yeah. hang on for the win. Good changeovers from the girls there too. So it looks like Loris did in lane seven having a good swim too. Yeah, you'll find a lot of swimmers either like to be out in front. Yep, or mow the other or person down. to have yep. someone to chase. Yep. Well, uh, Loreto uh, have got a solid lead here over MLC. So, coming down to this last 50. Can they hang on, can they hang on here? Oh, good underwater there from yeah, MLC. MLC She's coming come home up. strong. So this is going to be a good last 50 between these two. It can Loretto hang in there or can MLC run over the top? <laughs> this is going to be tight. Loretto's hanging on. Oh, they're coming back. And Down to last 15. Yeah, she's dug deep and found something here. Yeah. It's what always happens, I think. You find, you find another yeah, gear Yeah, look over and see someone yep. and go, no, not today. <laughs> so Loretto do take it out by 1.2 seconds. Yeah. It's pretty quick. What well, onto Loretto there. It's a gutsy swim in that last leg. It was. So Loriston got third there from lane seven, which is a great result for them too. Yeah. So we've just got four or five events to go now. Four events to go, actually. Yeah. So it's gone pretty quick tonight. 
So Star of the Sea in lane zero. Haven't seen them much tonight. So they've obviously got a relay team at least. Yep. So they've had a bit of a rest, some of these yeah, girls, since their last bit. individual <laughs> race. <laughs> Maybe about 10 minutes. Yeah. <laughs> Not much. All right, so MLC back in lane four again. Strathcona in three and Loretta around them. Sort of familiar names now again. Yeah. Familiar schools, I should say. In second place, Very even across the middle there at the moment. Yep. I think actually in lane five, Loreto might have the lead to start with again. So I think Loreto's going to touch in first. Or is it MLC? No, MLC's yeah, going to touch MLC. in first. Yep, at 29-2. Strathcona. This looks starting to see did well out there in, they did, in lane, lane zero. zero. They So it's pretty tight, though, with uh, Wright and Loretto either side of them. Sorry, no, sorry, Strathcona and Loretto. Yeah. All right, I think it's a three-horse race. Yeah, I think it is. So MLC is still marginally ahead. I'm speeding away now. You'd expect MLC to have a pretty strong swimmer to finish here, I think, as well. I'd say so. Yep. But we never know here. Loreno and Strathcona could have something planned. Try and chase her down. Yep. It's really hard, isn't it, to make up a lot of ground in a 50, though? It is, absolutely. Some swimmers enjoy that 100-meter relay because you've got more time yeah. with the tarmac to wear them down and catch them. Uh, they won't catch her now. It's been a great swim by MLC here to finish. It's going to be tight for second. They've got a 158 there, so they have gone under the two minutes, which is a great result. <laughs> so that's, that's seriously quick. 0.01 between second and third yeah, there. Yeah, tight finish between Strathcona and Loretto. But 158, that's a great swim to go under the two minutes. Means mm. that all swimmers have gone under 30 there, all four swimmers. So yep. that shows how strong those girls are in that, in that team. They've got a 158 there. So they have gone under the two minutes, which is a great result. So the year nine girls coming out now. Yeah. And it uh, looks like every lane from lane one to lane eight have swum every year in this. Mm-hmm. So some new teams in Mentone and Ivano there tonight. So they all swam in 2019. Yep. So uh, MLC, once again, the reigning champs. Loretto, second. <laughs> Seems to be a bit of a theme there. Yeah, it is a bit of a theme. And they're off. There we go. This looks like MLC out, out in front again to start with. Furbank looked to be having a good swim though in lane they are. six, actually. I was just so, going to say that. Yeah. Please make your way to the Marshalling area. Be close. So I think MLC going to touch him first with uh, Furbank in second. In fact, the first three swimmers there have all gone under 29. So, we've got a 27, a 28, and a 28, 2, 28, 8. So, that's a seriously quick first 50 from those girls. Yeah. Furbank actually having a really good swim here. She's gaining on this girl every stroke here. Yep. I think she's actually... Furbank are going to touch in oh, front here. Oh, oh the finish. 
Well, they've both they actually did. touched even. Point oh one. Point oh one. Yeah. <laughs> Doesn't get much closer than yeah. that. And Ryan is still in it though. In in between them, sort of log jam between them. Yep. No, they're not giving up. Yeah. It also looks like Sakura Kura doing in a fight for for third, I think, too. <laughs> well, Loretto have thrown down a challenge here in lane seven. Yeah. <laughs> I think MLC are proving to be too strong again here, though. That was a great third leg. But they just put a bit of room between themselves and Wrighton and Furbank. Yeah, it looks like MLC is going to uh, get another victory here. <laughs> Lots of gold medals in the relay. Just shows how strong they are in these teams. You know, you can have two or three good swimmers who can go with them, but it's hard to have four that can match them. The girls have gone 154 there. That's, that's pretty quick. So these girls are all probably averaging under 29 there. And Royton went that far behind yeah. in 157. So it's a very fast heat, that one. Yep. Are you 10 coming up? Yep. The girls have gone 154 so there. Three that's, events to go that's now. pretty quick. Yes, yeah, so it looks like we're going to finish pretty Three much right on time. time. Yeah. So MLC's in lane four again here. <laughs> so can they make it... Uh, I think this will be, what, eight out of ten victories in... Relays? I or think so. Seven out of ten? I think, yeah, I think it'd be eight. Yep. But have a look over the page, and what do we see? Year 12, there's no MLC yeah, team. No, I've seen the it's last interesting, eight. isn't it? It's interesting, they didn't yeah. have a medley relay, and they haven't got a freestyle relay. Yep. So leave it open for some other yep. teams. So Melbourne actually won this event two years ago in lane five. So yep. Wouldn't be counting them out just yet. Absolutely not. And Ivano came second uh, two years ago as well. So it's another team to watch. They're over in lane eight. So we'll have to keep an eye on them. Yeah. And they're actually off to a really good start too over there in lane eight. Is actually, that lane fact, eight? Uh, in lane two there. I think Genizano is it looking really strong too. So I think Genizano are going to touch him first here at the first 50. So I think we've yeah, had Genizano. some some changes in lanes from our program to our board here. So we've actually got Ivanhoe in, in lane, lane one, one. Yeah, and Sakura sorry. in lane eight. Okay. So they've swapped lanes for whatever yep. reason. And it uh, looks like MLC is overtaking Genizano now for holding that lead, but... I think Ivanhoe out there in lane one now. He's swimming well. And Wrighton are doing quite well too. So it does look like Wrighton's touching second behind MLC, who went out in a 58. So it's pretty quick in that first 100 from MLC. Yep. Yeah, Wrighton is throwing They're down right the challenge here. It. Yeah. Very so cool. Melbourne are actually still right with them here. If they can hang in there in this last 15, it is a bit of a gap, but you never know. Oh, she's... I don't think they'll catch MLC, but... It looks like MLC going to hang on for another win, and Melbourne's going to get second, but Mentone have had a good swim there in lane, in lane three as well. They have. So they did make up ground there, Melbourne, but it just wasn't enough time. Yeah, so it'll be MLC, Melbourne, and then Mentone. So three teams under the two minutes again. It's always a great sign. Yep. As we said, means three, all four swimmers have gone under 30 in that freestyle. So the year 11 girls now. Uh, 
did make up ground there, Melbourne, but just so MLC wasn't once again time. in uh, lane four yes, here for us. They did win it two years ago. They were second in 2018, so yeah, probably the team to watch for again here. But Furbank, we've got PLC in lane three. They've had a, only a few relays, I think. Yep. It's interesting, the team who came second two years ago is not actually in this race, so ah. Furbank came third two years ago, so well, we've had to stand down here. Alright, they're off. So can anyone knock uh, the MLC Reign of Relays off here? <laughs> <laughs> we will see. This yeah, is their this last, this is their last to do one. It. <laughs> Lane five certainly going to give it a crack. Yep. Which so Melbourne in Melbourne. lane five, yeah. So PLC didn't actually qualify for this two years ago, and they're in lane three here for us. So yeah. Sort of the unknown right now. Maybe they might be the the underdogs that we. But MLC What's going on here in lane strong. two? Where did they come from? Ivanhoe. Yeah, look. Yeah, exactly. They're coming home strong here. And Ivanhoe came tenth two years ago, so or three years ago. So. It's actually really tight though between MLC and Melbourne. Yeah, so wouldn't like to try and pick it just yet. I think MLC have a slight lead, but Melbourne are definitely still in this. Is they're coming down this last 50. <laughs> Don't forget Ivanhoe. Ivanhoe are still two. out there. Yeah, Ivanhoe are still going well. So MLC have got a solid lead here. Ooh, those two girls have gone in seconds. together there, yeah. and Ivanhoe and... Um, so I think it's a fight for uh, for second between Ivanhoe and Melbourne. Yeah, MLC is just yeah, their proving too strong way yeah. yet again. Their relays have been unbelievable tonight. They have. <clears throat> uh, Ivanhoe just dropping off a little bit here, and then... Um, it's going to be a quick swim too. This is going to be well under the, one, under the two-minute mark as well. Sneaking in for third, I yep. think. 156, so it's a quick swim from those girls. Yep, PLC have snuck in for third. Yep. So that's the end of MLC for tonight. Yeah. So I, think won, I think they won, yeah. <laughs> I think they've got 11. plenty of gold medals yeah. around their necks this evening. Yep. So last event of the night. Yes. So this is these girls' final ever race for GSV. Correct. So those girls. you'd hope that they give everything they got. I'm sure they left will. Left in this one. So Loretto, the favourite here. Yep. Well, it's been a pleasure working with you tonight, Tim. Thanks, Deb. It's been good fun, hasn't it? it We've has. seen some good swims. We have. Some, some really good swims. As we sit under the you know, circumstances that these girls are swum under. Yeah. No warm down. Short, you know, changeover between races. Yep. Just sort of shows how fit they are and their ability to back up. Correct. So I can hear the crowds getting pretty loud here for this final race, getting behind the year 12s in their final event. Bit of a fist pump. Yeah, from <laughs> lane six there, from OLMC, getting around each other. getting all excited but we need to be quiet for the start so nobody misses that starting signal So they've had the diving here tonight yeah. too in the indoor pool We're not sure how the <coughs> results are going for that yet No, I haven't heard
So I hope everyone's enjoyed watching from home. Yeah. You couldn't it's be here tonight. tonight. Go. All right. Final event of the night. Yes. Let's hope it's a good one. <coughs> so, uh, Loretto won this two years ago. And they've summoned every year. Same with Furbank. OLMC, Wrighton as well. So, a few teams have been here and done it all before. Yep. But uh, look, Melbourne have got a great start here in lane five. Yep. And a 28-4 there from Melbourne, so a great start for them. <laughs> Some great underwater work, though, yep. from Loretto there. That just shows that, isn't it, that changeover, how important it is. You can see how much ground they actually just made up there. Yep. Off a good changeover. It's actually pretty tight across the board here between uh, Melbourne and Furbank, Loretto and Genesano. <clears throat> yeah, the girl in Furbank's really... Um, Put her head down here. She has. So Melbourne's still got the lead, but Furback is still right there with them. They wouldn't run off Loretto just yet either. As they have won it the last three years in a row in mm. 17, 18 and 19. So maybe they've got a strong last 100, Furbank's but it's a long way to go. Really put her head down here. Yeah. I think she's actually nosed in front now. Yeah. I think Furbank have got the lead. Genizana, I think, have got into third place as well. going to be a great last leg. Yep, and Luce Furbank are going to take it out at the 150 mark here with 150 to go. Oh, yeah. Go. Going to catch her now, I think. It's going to be hard to catch Furbank here, I think. Yep. And Jenna Zano actually having a really good swim. They could sneak up to second here over Melbourne, but no one hanging in there. Oh! Although... Yeah, Loretto are coming, storming home <laughs> for a second. This is an amazing it's, swim. Yeah, very is that Livia Lafoe? I think it might be Olivia Lafoe. Yeah. So 2.01. Our time pad actually hasn't worked, worked there. For Furbank, yeah. It says they're first, but In they the must have I think had a got. second touch and it's yeah, the there time we go. disappeared. 159.81 yep. to take that one out. And that, well, that was a great last relay, wasn't it? It was. It was very exciting. Loretto came from nowhere <laughs> there at the end. They did. Oh, for a second, this is an amazing, amazing swim. Yeah, yeah very is that Olivia Lafoe? I think it might be Olivia Lafoe. That brings Loretto's reign of three years in a row in that relay to an end. It does. Well, it's been a great night of racing. It has. Yep, so... I'm sure there's still more school swimming to come. Yeah, I think there's one or two more comps left for the term. Yeah, well, we've got Thursday's the last day of school for these guys. So it is, yeah. So I think these guys will sleep pretty well tonight. I think so. <laughs> 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 well, I hope everyone's had a great night. And um, Easter's just around the corner, so yeah. I hope the Easter Bunny's good yeah. to everyone. I know that there's a new uh, Easter egg out, the Golden Gay Time Easter egg, and uh, that's what I'll be getting on. So I'll be getting a couple of those, I think. Fantastic. Yeah, <laughs> yeah so I must say, I like a bit of Easter egg chocolate. Yeah, who doesn't? <laughs> All right, yep. we'll wrap All it right, up well, then. Th thanks, everyone, for tuning in tonight. Yep, have a great night. See and you next time. Well done, girls, and some great racing. Yep, congratulations to all our winners.